They have made you glad. Psalm 45, verse 8. And who are thus privileged to make the Savior glad? His church, his people. But is it possible? He makes us glad, but how can we make him glad? By our love. Ah, we think it's so cold, so faint, and so indeed we must sorrowfully confess it to be. But it is very sweet to Christ. Here is own eulogy of that love and the golden canticle. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse, how much better is thy love than wine? See, loving heart, how he delights in you. When you lean your head on his bosom, you not only receive, but you give him joy. When you gaze with love upon his all-glorious face, you not only obtain comfort, but impart delight. Our praise, too, gives him glory. Not the song of the lips alone, but the melody of the heart's deep gratitude. Our gifts, too, are very pleasant to him. He loves to see us lay our time, our talents, our substance upon the altar. Not for the value of what we give, but for the sake of the motive from which the gift springs. To him, the lowly offerings of his saints are more acceptable than the thousands of gold and silver. Holiness is like frankincense and myrrh to him. Forgive your enemy, and you make Christ glad. Distribute of your substance to the poor, and he rejoices. Be the means of saving souls, and you give him to see the travail of his soul. Proclaim his gospel, and you are a sweet savor unto him. Go among the ignorant and lift up the cross, and you have given him honor. It is in your power even now to break the alabaster box and pour the precious oil of joy upon his head, as did the woman of old, whose memorial is to this day set forth wherever the gospel is preached. Will you be backward then? Will you not perfume your beloved Lord with the myrrh and aloes and cassia of your heart's praise? Yes, you ivory palaces, you shall hear the songs of the saints. They have made you glad. Psalm 45, verse 8.